I needed that. <laughs> All right, so uh, I had to think about what am I going to do? What will I do with this, this cracker? And this was a real problem because, you know, people sent me these crackers, and I have lots of them, and, and they're, they're trivial things. And just the fact of treating them, you know, extravagantly is giving them much more worth than they, they deserve. But, uh, you know, on the one hand, I'm, I'm, I'm getting all these creative ideas from people about what I should do with this, this cracker. Sometimes they're really amazing. Uh, people are saying I should build an entire statue of Jesus out of the cracker. <laughs> and you know, so they have sledgehammer and so too much work. I don't know, I'm not that. For sale on eBay. <laughs> Yes, that would be an issue. Oh, boy, I bet you eBay shut that one down. But anyway, yes, yeah, so there's there all kinds of ideas out there. And uh, ultimately what I did is I, I, I just started researching. I just said, okay, well, this is what we should do. Is we should just look and see what, what, what do people do with communion crackers when they want to desecrate them. And I, I quickly discovered that there were some really interesting things that people did with them. Uh, this is a woodcut from the 13th century. And it illustrates what the Catholics said the Jews did to their crackers, and that is... They got these crackers and then they used nails to punch holes in them to make Jesus suffer all over again. <laughs> and then they would get the blood that was dripping from these crackers and they would use them in their Jewish rites. And I've talked to a lot of Jews. There are no Jewish rites that use the blood of Jesus. <laughs> so this is entirely made up. Okay, so this, this is total nonsense. Uh, and, you know, you, you read this and you say, well, oh, that's, that's ridiculous, this is really silly. But then what you discover is when you read a little deeper, um, it's not silly at all. In fact, this was the source of a lot of human misery. Uh, in the 13th century, uh, what would happen is Catholic communities would get together and they'd say, the Jews over there are desecrating communion wafers, and they'd go over and kill them. Seriously. They'd rise up as a mob, they would go to the little village, uh, where all the Jews were segregated, and they would take the women and children and men, and they would torture them, and they would murder them. They exterminated entire communities this way. It stops being funny around them. And they've been doing this for centuries. That this has happened over and over again. Tens of thousands of Jewish people were murdered over post-desecration. It really is a serious issue, okay? This is, this is something that religious people believe, and as I discovered, believe quite fervently. It's total nonsense, and they were using it to murder fellow human beings. Okay, that, that, that's, that makes it a little even harder. Uh, but what I decided to do is, is, I had to get rid of this cracker, okay? So um, what, I, what I did is I, I picked one of them. Uh, it was a nice one, nice round <laughs> circuit wafer. Uh, it was also one with a good provenance. Uh, it was sent to me by a guy in England who actually videotaped receiving the consecrated wafer at, a, at the London Oratorio and then walking out with it and putting it in a baggie and putting it in an envelope and mailing it to me. So, we knew this one. This one was really Jesus in this <laughs> uh, The other thing is, is he wrote me a very nice letter and he said he's, he's sending this to me because of a, of a different reason, that he's protesting Catholic policies in Africa. That Catholicism has, as you know, a very strict policy about birth control and family planning. And they have been opposing family planning all over the world. But they have programs where they go out into communities and tell them, you'll go to hell if you use that condom. When a condom is exactly what these people need to know, do in order to control birth, birth rates and in order to protect them from disease. And this is, this is a horrible thing they're doing. Like I said, this is, this is actually a serious issue deep down. So what could I do? Well, oh, there's not much I can do. I, you know, in, in the face of uh, overwhelming poverty and disease and death in Africa, in the face of murders of tens of thousands of Jews in Europe, you know, I shouldn't be the one bringing the message of protest here, that we all ought to be complaining about the uses that the Catholic Church has put their dogma to. So what, what I had to do is, is something very simple, which is, okay, I put a nail through it. Oh, it's traditional, right? <laughs> and, and threw it in the trash. And just because they kept on telling me that the Muslims would chop my head off, I also ripped up a copy of the Koran. That's, that's it up there at the top. And pierced that with a nail. And uh, just to demonstrate that, like the sign over there says, nothing is sacred. Richard Dawkins, The God Delusion. Let's, let's rip that up, too. I had three copies I could spare one. <laughs> so, 
and I threw them in the trash with, again, being very traditional about it, coffee grounds and banana peel, right? And, and there it is. There's, there's a desecrated communion wafer. It did not believe at all to my disappointment. There were no screams from the heavens. Nobody said, ouch. It was kind of a downer. But then I, I threw that on the web, and then, then, of course, the mail accelerated, and I got lots of mail. All right. Uh, this, is, this is just one example, but like I said, I've got 18,000. I can show you all kinds of juicy stuff. Uh, this, is, this is one where that sentence I put in bold, I have to put there. Your act is far more deplorable than Hitler's Holocaust or the terror terrorists on 9-11. Now, think about that. What does that say about the mind of this person? Yeah, uh, here's, here's somebody who has seriously, this, this, I got lots of mail like this, where they seriously said to me that what I did was much worse than what Hitler did to the Jews in the Holocaust. Six million Jewish deaths versus one cracker. Which one is worse? Well, the cracker, obviously. That was, uh, again, it's, it's just unreal. Uh, the point of this whole exercise was, was really twofold. It's to show that, that dogma has no hold over me, that I'm not going to be accepting any kind of religious dogma. And I think the mission was accomplished there. But the second goal, the one that I accomplished beyond my wildest dreams, was to demonstrate that these religious beliefs were not only silly, but they were deplorable and despicable and dangerous that what we have here is people who use this as an excuse to do horrible things to human beings. And, and again, that's, that's what we have to do, is keep making this noise that religion has no hold over us. Okay, let me just wrap this up then uh, with, with one last thing. This is an issue I have to address, because this is the one I've heard over and over again, and I'm, I think Larry has heard this one over and over again. Uh, here I am, I'm, I'm demolishing Catholic crackers, and I'm a science educator, and they're saying, well, aren't you hurting the cause? Doesn't this hurt the cause of science education if you're going out there and, and defying religious people? If you're casting aspersions on religion when you've got so many students who are religious as well? Uh, and this is, this is a bit of a dialogue between Lawrence Krauss and, and Richard Dawkins that was published in Scientific American. And Lawrence Krauss is, is a great guy, I know him. He's, He's very smart. He's, he's also an atheist, right? Okay, he's, he's on our side. But this is, this is the common concern that he's voicing. He says, I wonder which is more important, using the contrast between science and religion, to teach about science, or trying to put religion in its place. And he's making a, a little bit of a subtle rebuke to Richard Dawkins, saying, well, you know, Richard, you're, you're putting religion, or you're putting science education in second place over your, underneath your crusade against religion. And, uh, I think he's wrong. That I think in this case that Lawrence Krauss has, has missed an important and subtle point is that you can do both at the same time. That you can be a good science educator and at the same time you can be working to put religion in its place. These are not mutually exclusive ideas. I mean, if, if, Kath, if Ken Miller can be a Catholic and a biologist, why are we so upset when somebody is going to be a biologist and a militant atheist? Of course we can. This does not interfere with science instruction at all. As I mentioned at the very beginning, this is not something that I talk about in my class. But we, do know, we, we don't do any experiments with communion wafers in my biology classes. This is something where they're just going to have to recognize that I've got dual roles, where I am an educator in the classroom, and I am also a tenured faculty member with academic freedom and a certain responsibility to the culture at large to say what's on my mind, to publicly disagree, that this is my responsibility to do this. Now, Krauss also says, you know, this, this other comment uh, that we also hear a lot, you know, telling people on the other hand that their deepest beliefs are simply silly, even if they are, and that they should therefore listen to us to learn the truth ultimately defeats subsequent pedagog pedagogy. And I have to disagree with Krauss once again. I think telling people that their beliefs are silly is extremely useful. This is a powerful tool. Ridicule is a great tool to pry apart ideas. That what we have to do is we have to have a dialogue with people, right? We have to talk with people. And what we have to seriously do is we have to address 
something that we believe strongly, and that is they 